Okay. all stand for the invocation and pledge. Father God, we come before you tonight asking for your wisdom, knowledge, and discernment for those representing us to know your will for Prince Now. We ask your peace and unity that only you can give. Thank you for working your will in our town. Bless those who represent us and their families. We pray as your word says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. We declare this for our town. In Jesus' name, amen. We remain standing for a pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the uh, town board meeting to order at uh, 701. Sandy, could you please read the roll? Councilman Holding. Present. Councilman Jack Russo. Here. Councilman Gray. Here. Councilman Laura. Here. Supervisor Esposito. Present. Also present is our attorney, Gerard Parisi. Okay, approved to the floor. Every scheduled town board meeting, the public will have the right to address the town board during the course of the meeting referred to as privilege of the floor. Members of the public should restrict their comments to items of town business. Although there is no official time constraint, speakers should be considerate of all others so that all interested members of the public have an opportunity to be heard. There shall be one person, the, one portion of the meeting dedicated to purpose of the floor near the beginning of each meeting. All remarks and questions shall be addressed to the board. No person shall enter into discussion with a person having the floor. Council members may address any comments during the course of the meeting referred to as council members' comments. We'll open up the uh, purpose of the floor at 7.03. Thank you. Board members, uh, Dave, you Dave Geisinger, um, uh, recent chairman of the Princeton Environmental Advisory Committee. Uh, I'd like to present to the town board and share with the town board the annual report of the Princeton Environmental Advisory Committee. Um, usually provided report by midsummer. Um, so I have uh, copies here for each member of the board, and I just want to uh, share, share a little one item from 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 the report. And then I'll go on to something else. It's not that. No, it's not that. No, it's not that. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> well, I could do better over here, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, our, our, our PDAC was formed by Town Board Resolution Number 1 50 years ago, and I think it was 50 years ago this month of July, uh, about the state of July, 1971. And uh, at, at that um, board meeting and passing of that resolution, um, it was uh, in, that, in, those minute, in that resolution that the PAC would provide an annual report to the town board of its activities over the past year, and also that PAC would uh, develop a natural resource inventory for, of the town resources, natural resources. Fifty years later, we are producing that natural resource inventory. I'd like to share one thing from the annual report, and um, that is um, a kind of a, a little summary of the Natural Resources Inventory Report. Um, on page 18 of the report, it's, we summarize the value of the report as follows. The end result of the Natural Resource Inventory is to preserve and enhance the, town, the natural resources of the town, including woodlands, wetlands, streams, open spaces, groundwater resources, wildlife habitats, and other environmentally sensitive areas, and ensure that growth and development is sensitive and compatible with the town's natural environment. In short, this information can help residents preserve the rural character of Princetown. Excuse me, Dave. What page were you on? I'm actually giving the annual report of PIAC. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not referring to the report. This moment. I will. I will next. 
Is they, anybody in the audience would like to have a, co a copy of the annual report? I have a couple extra copies here. Okay, Jack. Sure. Thank you. Yep. So, um, second and last, I would like to share a little bit about the Natural Resource Inventory Report that uh, PIAC has been working on very actively this, this year. Uh, we've had eight or nine meetings of PIAC during the past 12 months and uh, a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of work in between our meetings to, to develop the report and, and complete it. Um, so, um, <clears throat> this report uh, has been given to each town board member and it's also being reviewed currently by two staff members of the Skanky County Environmental Development and Planning Office. It's, it was mailed today to um, a woman who, um, in New Paltz, New York, who is environmental conservation. Uh, she was help, very helpful to us in developing sections of this report and she um, uh, was, is, is pretty much kind of an expert on land, land use issues and, uh, and, and, and natural resources and inventories. Um, I wanted to um, mention an item in the report that is on page 10 of the report. On page 10, there, there is a, a table. Table number two says Princetown land cover. And this is the land cover in the town of Princetown breakdown. On this one. Yeah, in that report, <coughs> page 10. It's the land cover that existed as of the year 2016 or maybe 2017. And there were aerial flights over the town at that time. And the national organization um, developed this land cover breakout. Um, kind of some interesting things about this land, this table 10. One of the three three things I um, I mentioned that um, interesting that 30 percent of the town area or 4,700 acres are in agriculture, either cropland or pasture or hay fields, and some of this some of this agriculture. Uh, is in the ag district, and some of it is outside the ag district. A second, th a second item of interest from that table is that the forest cover in the town is at least 49 percent of, of dedicated forest uh, types of forests, but it's probably maybe even closer to 60 percent of the town area is covered in, in, in forest, because um, beyond beyond the um, dedicated uh, forest covers identified, there are uh, floodplains along the Norman scale and wetlands and other areas uh, of the town that are not strictly declared to be forest cover, but often these wetlands are in forest or, the, or these uh, floodplains are, are forest cover. So somewhere between 50 and 60 to 60 percent of the town is in forest cover. And the last um, item, of, kind of, I thought it was kind of a general interest item, is that the total area of developed lands in the town is only 12, 1,340 acres, or 8.67% of the town area. So we think that we, 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 so far we have a rural town, a rural atmosphere, and that's wonderful. And uh, I thought that would be interesting to know that only 8.67% of the land, town land is is, is developed. Uh, I thought you'd find that interesting. Um, the last thing I have, and, and Greer may have a, a few items that she may want to sh share too from the report, about the report. The last item I have is, is about a fold-out map that's in your report. It's called, it's entitled uh, Aerial, aerial, um, aerial View Map. Um, now the one in your report is a little smaller scale than this one I'm holding up here. And the one I'm holding up here is it's, it's, it's large enough, it's, it's a significant scale that you are able you, you are able to looking at the map closely, maybe with a magnifying glass, able to pick out individual homes, 
uh, structures, town hall, commercial businesses, uh, so forth along with seven and, and elsewhere. Um, I think this map might be useful for the town to put in, put out in the hallway, maybe on a styrofoam board and under under a plastic cover to keep it from being scratched up or marked up uh, for for residents to take a look at, come in and take a look at, and spot spot their properties and so forth because the property lines are on here too. So uh, just. Uh, uh, I'd be happy to uh, get a clean copy of this map. This has got crease marks in it from being folded, but I'd be happy to get a clean copy of this for the for the town. Or if you if you'd like it, and mounted in the in the town in the, uh, in the hallway for that purpose. Are there any questions so far? I don't have any. I've looked over and read everything over and looked at the maps myself. Greg, you want to add anything? Just a, a bit, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll get out of the way and let Greer come up and, and share a little bit too. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Is there any questions for uh, at this point? No. Okay. Well, yeah, we're sincerely hoping that if anybody uh, see something that they know is not right that they let us know so we can get that corrected before final approval of the report. Um, and I'd like to thank David Geisinger for his energetic leadership in getting this thing done this year. And I didn't realize it was 50 years in the making. I thought it was <laughs> since 1975 or so. Um, now, we have, we're a little behind schedule. We have not gotten our, all our answers back from the other reviewers besides yourself. And uh, we're, we want the, uh, the planning board and the zoning review board to have copies, uh, but uh, it's not clear to me whether we, they should have copies now or after the thing is finally approved. So that's up for you folks to decide. The other thing, uh, uh, it for you to decide is if you want other people to review it. And the last thing for you to decide is if we need a hearing like there was for the uh, comprehensive plan. Well, uh, I can say right now that if uh, anything that we would do along these lines would have to go through a committee to, uh, to be amended into the comprehensive plan. And uh, the committee right now, there is no committee. We would have to uh, appoint a committee to uh, update the comprehensive plan, and this would have to be part of the comprehensive plan. Am I correct in, in what I'm saying here? Oh, I, I didn't know that. This yeah. is No, this is a, uh, this would have to, because most of this was already in the original comprehensive we plan top years the, ago. Yeah, on top And I've noticed that you uh, copied a lot of the things we that were yeah. out of the original comprehensive plan. Yeah. Because uh, I was involved in the old comprehensive mm -hmm. plan. I was I just became a board member. But any of this would have to go into the comprehensive plan. It would have to be reviewed by the planning board, the zoning board, and we would have to establish another committee to make it a part of the comprehensive plan. And in a comprehensive plan, the members would have to present it to the town board for, for final approval. This is not a process for just the town board to say it's okay. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I uh, mentioned that to you when we had this meeting uh, three or four weeks ago. I didn't hear it. I don't, know, I don't know if you mentioned it or not, but I didn't get it until now. <laughs> yes, no. This, when, when, when you do something like this, this has to be a part of the comprehensive plan. Oh. And I don't know when we're going to be doing the comprehensive plan. What is the usually the dates when you do this? Is it five years that's supposed to be upgraded? Five years, I thought was the general Five years, and we haven't done it for five years, so maybe it's time that uh, we put a committee together to uh, review the comprehensive plan, and, uh, and you would certainly want to be a part of this. To uh, to go into it. We just uh, did that two years ago. 2019. 
Uh, yeah. was the last uh, yeah. update of the conversation. Two, two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. So it'd be up to the town board if they want to re you know, review this now and then uh, form a committee and, and uh, have them study this to put it into the comprehensive plan. It, you know, there's no law that says it has to be done within five years. That was generally the rule, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what we would have to do. And I don't know what the board's feelings are on it. Uh, okay, well, we can canvas the board right now and see what you would what we would like to do. That. do it. It's a big deal. Do it. Ben, are you uh, interested in doing the upgrading? The uh, have putting a committee together to do to review the comprehensive plan. June, or would you? Yeah, I mean, this this is essentially uh, data that they'll use. There is a, uh, it's not going to change what's <coughs> currently in there, that I can see. Well, this would be added to it. Uh, there was a lot of things taken out of the old comprehensive plan. Uh, one of them was singling out uh, individual properties. People in the town were not in favor of that at all. Uh, they were up in arms over it. For their own reasons, they didn't want to have people uh, telling them what they can and cannot do with their properties. As far as uh, historical, it was called historical back then. All of the properties in the original comprehensive plan. I don't know how they would receive it today, uh, but we want to put a committee together. We can establish a committee and have them review everything. You can certainly be a part of the committee. Uh, you and Dave, you know, would be, uh, be uh, if you were interested in doing that, we could put a committee together to uh, to review the comprehensive plan. But this would definitely have to be part of the comprehensive plan. It's just not up for the town board to say we're going to add this and this is going to be a, uh, that's, that's, that could not be. The planning board should be involved a little bit in it and give their insight into it. The zoning board should be involved in it and give their insight into it. Uh, along with whoever we decide to put on a committee, we certainly have both of you like to be on a committee if you'd like. Yep, and uh, we have the succession going on within the committee because uh, David Geisinger resigned as of the end of June this year and uh, asked me if I would be willing to be the chairman, and I certainly am. That's in our, that's in our, okay. um, or in our agenda tonight. And mm -hmm. I have. I like to flip the the objections that you talked about right on their head. I'm coming at it from a different direction, uh, and you can see as you read this thing that what I'm going for is for the Princetown landowners and the town itself to work together and with the County of Schenectady to get grants of federal and state money to preserve things, to preserve environmental uh, treasures. And so obviously the landowner is where it all begins. They learn about it and decide they want this and then they apply. Like for the farmers, it would be going through the agriculture board for Schenectady County, but it has to have the support of the town board and all this all together. And it's amazing how many millions of dollars um, have rained upon uh, Washington County and Saratoga County through this process, which benefits uh, preserving the environment. It's great. And it's perfect for our situation where we don't have tax dollars to spend on it like Malta does. So. I've, I've received correspondence from the state about the grants that are available for some of these things some of these projects too. But uh, like I said, uh, uh, we would have to establish a committee uh, among our residents, see if anybody wants to be uh, involved in it. Um, I'm sure Jack may want to be in it, I don't know. He, uh, <laughs> I hope he's going to be involved yeah, in it. Yeah, and Jack has been to our committee. To and be honest, the committee that we had two years ago I thought, most of us are here, mm -hmm. it, it was a good productive committee. Um, 
I, I certainly would be happy to serve again. Great. So we'll work on that and get a uh, committee uh, together. And uh, like I said, Dave and you, Melanie, and I don't know, Jack, I don't want to keep throwing you in. <laughs> I know you're very busy with your business and all that. If you're interested, we can certainly uh, we can certainly meet some people. It can't be any book. I don't know if we want to. Is that yeah. all right? Have some people on the town board. We did the last time. It was on the town board. Yeah. We, we didn't have anybody on the town board, but back the ones on the town board. Oh, yeah. You weren't on it? Yeah, you were on the board afterwards. Yeah. And on behalf of the uh, town board, thank you for all your hard work. I know this represents a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of meetings, a lot of time, and uh, it's hard to do. And thank you very much. We appreciate it. Lou, would it make any sense to consider this an addendum to the comprehensive plan? And when the five years are up, then then have, then have more of a comprehensive review and updating of the comprehensive plan instead of doing it now? I don't know. Well, this this is mostly information. Right. It's informational. Yeah, there's not really a lot of here's guidance on what direction to go. I mean, you know, I haven't read it completely yet. But just glancing through it now, it seems mostly informational. suggesting that we replace the signs on both ends of the road. Uh, he's talked with the county about it to see if they can do it. They'll, at, at, you know, they'll probably charge us for it, but uh, we should have road signs up there to you know what the, uh, the name of the road is. So uh, He's also uh, talked with the uh, county about uh, the problem we have on Ruder Drive. Could you elaborate on that a little bit, Doug? We talked to Nick today. If they washed out again, the creek's filled up in front of my house. The manholes are full to the top again. And they got to clean the ditches. He was suggesting that they uh, they make it a little bit deeper on the end of the road there. 
I don't know if that's feasible or not. No, it's just the manhole right on the end of Ruger <coughs> Drive. The dirt's pulled right to the top. Well, uh, and the county gave All the way in front of my house, which is the county road for Ruger Drive coming down. Mike fixed it, but he's got it up here, and where it comes out of the catch basin, it's three foot lower. He don't want a weak way. Okay. He wants a mold. Well, uh, <coughs> it's kind of getting cleaned some... out because right now the water where my mailbox is is about this much lower than Piper Drive. And the water comes down a Ruder Drive, the catch basin is full to the top, right to the creek with dirt. Well, uh, we had a price last year from the uh, county to clean all of those catch basins out up and down Ruder Drive. It was quite expensive. Well, we didn't do it last year, but uh, we put it off for a year because it's quite expensive. I think the, the price was like uh, fifteen thousand dollars. I can get a I can get a quote on they it. They went up there and did it last year. I see them there. They sucked them out, but I'm telling you right now, the inner Ruder Drive is four hundred and fifty grand. Well, Nick the is water get... does not go in it, and the dirt is three foot deep where it comes out of the out of the catch base. Well, would you and uh, if the county comes up there with you and Nick like to uh, give your suggestions on it and meet with them? I've already done that. I know I was there with you, but let's see what they can come up with. Yeah, not a problem. Okay. I'll call Nick tomorrow and see if he can set it up. He said there, but the county's going to clean back the road. That's what he told me today. Because it's right up to the road. And you gotta, you got to clean the catch basin, though. That's the all. It is right to the creek right now. The water does not warn it, and a pipe that comes out, three foot high. Three foot dirt from. Okay, we'll get them up there and see what we can do with it then. I'm there all the time, so when they go, I'll be there. Other than that, that's all we have with the uh, highway department, and we've got the water of the Collins on here. He's no longer with us, he's retired, so we've got Wes here. And you have your report, Wes? Yep, we've got it here. I uh, gave uh, Sandy the copy. I can read it. It's up to you. Yeah, if you'd like to read it, we'll save me from reading it. All right. Uh, last month, we pumped 2,310,900 gallons of water. Our maximum daily usage was 159,000. Uh, actually, with all the rain, uh, one day we didn't pump any water. The pumps never even come on. We didn't drop the tank only about eight or nine feet. So we didn't we didn't even pump any water that day. There was water usage, but we didn't pump any water. Uh, we had a water main break or repairs as follows. On June 10th, there was an accident at Birchwood and Pangburn that damaged our brand new valve boxes and possibly broke bolts. We don't know. We're waiting for weather conditions to improve so we aren't digging in the mud. And uh, I've been in contact as recent as today with the insurance company. They're going to uh, cover all the repairs and the inspection. Uh, June 15th, we had a water main break on Darrow Road uh, that was repaired on the same day. Uh, ongoing issues, the Ruder Drive tank continues to leak. Uh, we've been in contact uh, with the manufacturer to repair that. The town board knows of everything that's going on with that repair. We still have a small leak in the booster pump station on Gifford Church Road. We're just waiting to schedule it. And all the water readings are complete and all bills have been issued. Uh, and I, I responded to numerous calls about the increase and talked with numerous residents about it and the exorbitant usage of some residents. Uh, and I will extrapolate on that a little bit. A lot of the complaints are coming from people who have sprinkler systems. 
and they can't believe the number of gallons that, it, that they used. And uh, in the near future, we're going to start addressing those sprinkling sprinkler systems and irrigation system that people have on their lawns. You know, water is not cheap. We live in a in a rural atmosphere. The distance between houses is great, so the cost per resident is high. We don't live in Rotterdam where the houses are 100 feet apart from each other. It may it may be a half a mile down the road before there's another house, which helps increase the cost. So the more you water your lawn to make it green, the higher you drive the cost of water up. And we'll be addressing that from from here on. Other than that, if anybody's got any questions for me. The uh, the tanks are going to be repaired, the one on Settles Hill, too. Is yeah, both repair. of them. Right. They're going to be uh, done in the fall of the year? We're, we're planning on doing them in the fall of the year uh, once we have funding and we have to put a 35% deposit on our scheduling. I talked to him today after I had seen you, Lou, and we have to put 35% down. So just as soon as we get the monies are available and we can possibly do that, we can get it scheduled. The uh, when the, uh, the cost of repairing them is 136000 135 or 136000 that's correct. And that's to repair both tanks. The maintenance should have been done on Ruder Drive numerous years ago. That would have cut our costs down tremendously. Uh, Settles Hill, the exterior of the tank is in good shape. We just have to replace the uh, anode rods inside the tank on Settles Hill and do a couple minor touch-ups uh, on Settles Hill. Both the exterior and the interior need to be rehabbed on Ruder Drive because they've been neglected for years. So, they've been leaking for about 10 years. Right? About 12 years they've been leaking, and it should have been addressed sooner than this, but it's to a point now where it's, it's either live or die, and we have to do something if we're going to save the system. Save the, the bubble tank. system and the rotors in the bed, they're not the, working either. The mixer is not working in the tank uh, to keep it from freezing. We have to put another mixer in the tank. I looked at putting a bubbler in it compared to putting a mixer in it. Unfortunately, the cost of a bubbler compared to putting a new style mixer in the tank is actually higher than going back to the old, to a new style mixer, which is actually, I've talked to two other municipalities that have the new style mixers and they haven't had any problem or any breakage, unlike the old original mixer we had in that tank. This has been a problem for everybody that doesn't understand that the, on Ruder Drive, the mixer's been bad for years and years, and what has happened top of the tank has been freezing, which has been causing more problems with the leak up there, am I correct? That's correct. It's actually scratched the inside of the tank and scratched the glass lining off the inside. We've got pictures of it. They actually sent, quote unquote, a sub in to take pictures while the water was in the tank. And uh, the pictures are not really that pretty. It's something that should have been addressed right after it happened, not 10 or 15 years down the road. Explain to everybody what, what's involved after they after they uh, uh, drain the tank and what what you and who, who's working with you have to do so that there's not a, uh, a what do you call it a uh, water, hammer. water hammer into the line which would cause our fragile lines to, to break. Un unfortunately, once you once you eliminate that tank from use. In order to maintain water in the rest of the system, uh, it's quite complicated. Uh, you have to turn pumps on and off and open valves in sequence in order for this to happen and maintain water for all the residents. Uh, that tank would have to be taken out of service for a week to 10 days in order to do this repair. So for a week to 10 days, we're going to have to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week in order to maintain water for all the residents that are connected to the system. It's going to be a long, drawn-out process. And at this point, anything that happens, I'm trying to eliminate everything that we can possibly do that this doesn't happen again. I mean, things need to be addressed as they happen, not 10 or 15 years down the road. 
As you scheduled the last meeting over there, the, the, the wells have been rehabbed and new pumps to put in. So. That's correct. We've uh, both wells are up. They're actually pumping at capacity or above capacity of each pump. Uh, we were actually one well was only operating at 65 percent of its capacity. The other well, presently or before we had rehabbed it, was actually at about 60 percent capacity. That's how wore the pumps and everything were. Both pumps were the original pumps that were put in in 2000. And that was over 50,000. And that was over for that was uh, to do both of those was approximately sixty thousand dollars. How often should they be done? They should be checked a minimum of every five years. They may not necessarily have to be rehabbed. The the one well, uh, the screen at the bottom of the well was was over eighty percent clogged due to the fact it had never been cleaned. Whether it was calcium buildup, manganese buildup, or uh, silt. Whichever uh, it was 80% plugged with a little bit of sediment in the bottom. Uh, it was rehabbed and cleaned. The second well, there was almost three and a half feet of sediment in the bottom of the screen, and the screen that screen was over 50% plugged. The first well went down in, in December when we started to break suction, or excuse me, December April we started to break suction, and that's when we. Uh, started scheduling everything. We already had it in the in the plan to do the work this spring or early this summer. Unfortunately, it went down sooner. I'm just trying to keep the system up and going and maintained and fix it the right way so we don't have to go back and put another Band-Aid on. Uh, anything else? That's about all I got. Well, we did. We have been receiving complaints on the the uh, price of the water going up, and uh, Wes has been handling most of the calls. I had to handle a few of them. But is what people don't understand is there's only 324 people. Am I correct? That's correct. That are on this system out of the 600 that could could, could be on the system. And unfortunately, uh, it's quite expensive to maintain this system especially since all of the lines are eventually going to have to be replaced. And I know that the, the cost is going up, and it's not only the cost, it's the operating and maintenance, which is part of your taxes, that goes on your tax bill for the residents that, are, that have the water. There's been a question about this before. And the way it's worked, and the way it's worked in every town is, when you raise the budget, you're increasing the tax on the operating and maintenance. And we raised the bu budget dramatically this past year. It's not only the cost of the water, it's the cost of the operating and maintenance that goes into your tax bill for the people that are hooked up to the water. Not the other 300 that are not hooked up to it. They're only paying for the water bond. So that's why their taxes went up. There was a question about that. We did have uh, a problem with uh, two of our residents that uh, took us to court, and uh, unfortunately, we didn't know about it until the end. We never even knew that there was a court date that was set up. No, nothing was ever said to us until our attorney notified me that nobody showed up for the hearing. But anyway, that amounted to 1%. So when people look after the tax bill, it's operating and maintenance, which went up about 20%. That's what the, that's what it did. That amounted to another one percent. So every time you increase the budget, it's not only the price of the water. That's separate. It's the operating and maintenance, the O and M. That's part of your tax bill for the residents that have it. And I know everybody complains about the price of this water, but unfortunately, there's only 324 people. I think there's how many out of district residents that are hooked up? Seven. I'm not sure exactly the total number. Seven or eight, Seven that, or eight. Are, that are out, out of district, which are complaining to no end. Wesley could get into a one owes ninety-seven hundred dollars. I think am I correct in that? I'm not sure exactly what it is. I know it's it's a big amount. It's over seventy-five hundred dollars. Well, it's uh, 
you know, they're, they're hooked up to it, they're complaining about it, everybody's complaining about it. You know, we, we have, a, we have a, a choice over here on this. Either we're going to have to, to continue to fund this, and it has to be self-funding. You know, you, we can't take money from the other parts of the budget to, to fund the water system. Uh, it has to be self-funding for the 324 people that are hooked up to the water. And unfortunately, the price is going up. We have a choice. Either we, we, this current town board had nothing to do with this. We weren't involved when the system was put in, which was put in. We all know what the problems are with the lines that were put in. They weren't put in properly, but you get what you pay for. And unfortunately, the lowest bid came in. <clears throat> bolts and saddles. They didn't use stainless steel. They're all failing, as you can tell you. Rocks put in over the tops of the pipe. They couldn't even lift some of the boulders out of there with, a, with the one of their machines. They couldn't even get it off. You're just going to have to bite the bullet, and we're going to have to maintain it. That's the, that's the one choice. The other choice is we could sell the system to a private entity and let somebody else run it, or we could disband it. And I don't think anybody wants to do the latter, too. So, for the 324 people that are on it, you're going to have to bite the bullet, and if you want to maintain the system, the, the price is going to continue to escalate. Unless we can get some funding from the, from the federal government to replace these lines, which are going to have to be done, and we've talked about it, Wes and I said before, we were on a Zoom call with, uh, with our congressman about that, who's in charge of this, and we tried to... Uh, tell him what the price would probably be, and he was like, set back on it. Um, millions. But, uh, you know, that's one of the committees he's on, who he chairs, I guess, in Congress. So, you know, other than that, we're just going to continue to have these problems. <coughs> 18 water main breaks last year. 18. I mean, you, you know, and each break is what, 3,500? Yeah, or more. That's one more, 4,500. We don't have a maintenance crew to with backers and dozers and everything else to maintain uh, the system. You know, we, we rely on an outside vendor who's been very good to us over here, does not pressure us for the money. We still owe him a lot of money. Uh, now we got this big bill coming up. So when people complain about it, I don't know what to tell them. Uh, Jack, are you well, can I just say, I don't think you have 324 complaints. If you got phone calls complaining, not all of us are complaining, and many of us appreciate the water supply we have in the town and the, and the quality of water we have, and we understand the cost of doing it and the, the trouble that that uh, has developed over the years, and, and you know what Wes and the town board's trying to do to straighten it out. So. No, I didn't call and complain. All no, I just said you said everyone's calling and complaining. I'm just well, letting not you know. Everyone. Yeah. Not everyone's yeah, calling and complaining. Complaints. <laughs> and, and Wesley's handling most of them, and, and, and Rick is handling most of them. Uh, many of us they, 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 appreciate they to listen to the run of it. Yeah, many they of us appreciate it. When they went to, to their homes and tried to explain it to them, and they started yelling at him, and he's taking an awful lot of heat for it, which he shouldn't have to. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately, that's what uh, that's what's happening. So but everybody's got to understand. You know, you know, we're left with that choice. Either we, it's got to be self-funding. You know, I, no I would like to add, it. in all it fairness, self-funding. In all fairness to the town board who put the water system in, it was the perfect storm of grants and funding at the time. The system had a lot of thought, a lot of planning. Muriel Peterson worked effortlessly to do it. Um, the system was put in and overseen by the engineer and inspected. When you talk about the bolts and the saddleties, what is in the ground was recommended. Stainless was an extra cost that at the time the town did not take. What has been discovered over time is that our soil is eating our system. So to your point, the maintenance is, and to Wesley's point, the maintenance has been laxed. We know this, that was an issue, but in all fairness to the, the inception of this system, 
a lot of time, a lot of grant money, a lot of effort, and a lot of oversight. This wasn't just thrown in the ground. The problems have come since with our soil, with our system, with, as we all know, there were a lot of repairs and things to, to Wes's point that went untouched and undone for years. Our water rates have not been raised in 10 years. Am I wrong? Is it 10 years? <coughs> it, I, I was on the board when it was. I believe Nick Mora was supervisor. That should have been done every year to cover the cost of this system. You're talking about the O&M being on the taxes. Yeah, that's where it's winding up. And it's unfortunate because the way the system was set up and the, and the way it was supposed to be funded on the tax bill was supposed to be the infrastructure. Usage was supposed to be to cover the O&M. Unfortunately, it's not, we, we can't catch up now because those yearly rates should have gone up all along. And, and you're right, people are complaining because they don't know. They don't understand how the system works. Jack, yes, we are all appreciative. We have a system. So like Doug has brought up before, we need to keep increasing. There needs to be increased usage rates every year moving forward. We built that in. We, we, it has to be, and, and I, I hear you, and I know you did. <clears throat> But that's something that needs to be addressed yearly. The point I always and now here we are. is you're paying, paying per right. gallon, point zero zero three. Go buy a bottle of water at Stewart's. You're paying a dollar something. Right. You go to Stewart's and buy a cup of coffee. What's a cup of coffee? Small will cost you. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me you can't pay a dollar a day? Right. And I think the issue You're is that 300 0 people 0 don't understand. Three for Correct. a gallon of water. Getting and in. Why are you buying the water at Stewart's when you can open your faucet up and get it? And it's the best water in the York State. Right. <laughs> but the people doing it don't right. understand what it's paying for. Right. You know, and getting and getting information out is important. And, and anybody that wants to water their lawn. Why do you want to mow the lawn three times a week? I don't want to mow mine at all. I'd rather mow a hundred acre field than mow the lawn. You know, I and 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 to, to to that point, I know just for the neighborhood town of Rotterdam, people who had lawn sprinkling systems, they had their own wells. So what they did is they appointed, you know, someone to go to check to make sure the lawn sprinkler system was hooked up to a well. Mm -hmm. So they could use their well to water the lawn. I understand. You, I know exactly. And then, the, and then you're not using a town water to water your lawn. Right. So they, you, you can get, you know, they put a sign up that that they had a well, so right. a well issue. It might be something else that All you, you should advise and consider for, for the future. Right. You know, All you got to do in Rotterdam is put a point in the ground, 20 feet, and you can suck all the yeah. water you want. But, You're not going to put a point in the ground out here and suck but this, the, but uh, this is all evolving, and, and what you you and you know with with the town board and, and with West, it's all getting corrected, right. like Bell said. You know, it, it, it wasn't put in knowing that this was going to happen. So it, this happened, and it has to be fixed, and we're fixing it, and and we we appreciate all you're doing to give us the town water that we have. We did apply for two grants, by the way, to replace the system, but the per capita income in the town of Princeton is so high that the feds are saying we don't qualify. So we did that twice. Mm -hmm. You know, the good news is for 75 cents a day, you get all the water you can drink delivered to your door, and you don't have to pay for the electricity to run your pump in the ground. You don't have to pay $3,000 to replace a pump every 10 or 12 years when they go bad and the value of your property it automatically goes up if you're connected to the water. So that's the good news. The bad news is, unfortunately, we did have to raise the rates. We'll have to continue to raise the rates. Yeah. It's a, unfortunately, it's a joint and several responsibility of all those involved, 324 people involved, and I'm one of them. Yeah. I accept my joint and several liability. Whatever it costs me, for me, it's worth it. It's, oh, absolutely. You know, I just, I don't have a problem with it. I, I, you know, I'm, I feel bad for folks that you know, got blindsided by this, but we had no choice, and believe me, you don't even want to know 
how hard we've been working to try and uncover, uncover funds from everywhere. And believe me, this is not, this is no joke. We can't possibly do it on the money we collect, by the way, from, from the users. Then we don't have enough. We don't then have we enough. Got to charge more. But we're, we've, but we've fortunately been able to, we've been able to, to, right? to uh, the federal government is going to give us some, um, some money, not a lot, but because we're a small town, we get a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, the only thing you can use it for is infrastructure. And they're very specific about infrastructure. Water and sewer right. are in the two pieces that we can use it. So hopefully, once that money arrives, that will give us some relief. And This is only going to be a, a short-term fix, as Wesley will say. Right. The lines have to be replaced. There is no question about it. He'll tell you this. We've already discussed this. They're going to have to be replaced. They're, they're not in the ground the right way. I don't care what anybody says. There's a guy that put them in for 40 years. He knows what he's talking about. They're not in the ground the right way. They're going to all have to be replaced. They dug up the line on Route 7. They found well, how many leaks in there that were ready to break? Well, there was four more leaks that we found after we dug it up that were so on The lines are going to have to be replaced. If we don't get funding to do this and start doing it uh, piece by piece, a little bit at a time, and get this done, the rest of Route 7 is going to have to be done. There's, there's another, that's a big problem area. He'll tell you that all of the breaks we continually have on, our, on Route 7. It's going to have to be done. The, the system has got to be replaced. There's no question about it. The money we receive is only a short-term fix. It's just going to continue to happen. So we're going to try to get funding, we'll talk with the congressman about this, see if we can get funding uh, to start doing this piece by piece. And that's the only alternative we have. We don't have any other problems now with the wells and uh, the pump stations. They're all corrected. We're going to get the tanks repaired. But we're only going to continue to have water main breaks. For a system that's 20 years old, this system should have lasted 100 years, even with the ground that we have here, if it was put in the proper way. It was not put in the proper way, and this is what we got. I don't care. Can't blame the engineer on this. Yeah, you well, you can and you All can't. You, know, you, know, you get what you pay for. The company's you know? out of business, so we can't. There's nothing we can do. I, I mean, we can argue about he said, she said, she said, he did this, move they did forward, that. Right? But we need to move forward. Yeah. We need to correct right. what we have now, that's what we're doing. and that's what we're doing, and put it to bed. Yeah. Uh, with a with a budget that I put forth last year, uh, we've come come a long ways. Unfortunately, we had a five-year plan that we were going to try to do this over the next four or five years. Unfortunately, the well went down. And while the first one went down, the second one went down. And we maintained what we had to do and did what we had to do in that particular point in time to keep Clark and I work to keep it going. Nobody lost service the whole time. We continued going. We had the second one rehab. Now we're up and going. So we've got one hurdle we went over. We're just going to have to keep bucking each hurdle as we go. And instead of pointing fingers, we just have to keep the system moving. Mm -hmm. Paul Tonko is on the uh, infrastructure committee on the federal level. And, you know, if anybody wants to write a letter to his office, and by the way, he has three offices. I wrote, I wrote letters to all three offices. But the more he receives, the better shot we might have of him intervening. He has, you know, he theoretically could replace all our lines. Um, we've, we've met with him, we've sent letters to him. If anybody wants to send a letter to him, that would probably be a good thing. I would like to read this letter that, it was a nice letter that was sent to Wes, was sent to the town along with the check. It goes without saying, we are grateful for the quality and quantity of water that is made available to us in Princetown, to us as Princetown residents, we too are personally aware of the condition of all the piping from the, the initial install that is continuing to need attention, particularly with the two problems that needed fixing in the recent months in front of our house. So Wes, we're grateful for your overseeing our town and water as we received and are now paying this year's bill with our enclosed check with such a large increase in our annual base rate, we would, would have hoped 
and thought someone from the town would have written to inform us, our Prince Town residents, beforehand of this large increase, hoping in the future if it needs to be again, please let some let us know, let the residents know. That's our problem. We should have probably sent a letter. It's too late now. The bills have already been out, and the money's almost all of the money has been collected. So it's too late to send anything out. But and I did get a call on it, and uh, I, I said to the resident after I explained to him what was going on, they uh, they said we had no idea that the problems that existed with the water system, and uh, I said, well, it's been in our newsletter that uh, we've had problems with it. We also have our town board meetings that are broadcast on the government channel and they're on YouTube. You can go back from any of the first days that we started broadcasting and you can get it on YouTube. And every month our meeting is on there as last month's was on our government channel. And their comment to me was, I had no idea. It, it would have if the water went down. But That's what they, they said. I had no idea that we could watch this on <laughs> TV. I said, for the last 10 years it's been on TV. Every meeting. So people are not aware of that. I don't know, I don't know how else we can inform them to write them letters. We're not going to yeah. write letters now. No, I, I'm going to, uh, let me intervene quick, Lou. A couple residents asked about sending out a monthly newsletter, and people don't understand that if you send out a newsletter to each and every user, the cost is tremendous. Things. You're right. We're Every just... mailing would cost a thousand, around around a thousand dollars. I figured it out. By the time you write the letter, pay for the pay for the <coughs> paper, pay for the printing, pay for the postage, pay for the envelopes. Looking at a thousand dollars for mailing, it's so, absolutely well, ridiculous. And what are you going to say? And what are you the gonna, same thing you're saying. The same right thing now. I'm saying right now. Well, I'm, I'm thinking what we have. So we need the, the environmental committee needs to communicate with the residents about getting this federal and state money. You need to communicate with the residents about what's going on in the water system and what we've all got to do. And my idea is why don't we uh, create a more active website and communicate that way because people are more in tune that way like at Shellmont School District. If everybody communicates on the website. Right. Yeah, or people Facebook still don't go on the website. But, you know, a lot of people so don't even, like I said, they don't even know that, that yeah. their meetings are broadcast. They don't know, like I said, you can go back on YouTube and see every meeting that we've had from before Melanie was supervisor. I think we started doing that, broadcasting the meetings. I mean, you can go back 10 years and you can get any meeting you want. Uh, from Melanie to uh, Mike Joyce to uh, any of the supervisor that were involved, Bob, myself, all of those meetings are available. And we've been talking about this. This is not something new. We've been talking about this for two years. Two years we've been talking about the problems we have with the water system. This is not something that just happened overnight. So, you know, you can't, you, you can't force people to, to uh, read things, you know, they get a newsletter and a lot of times they just look at it and they just don't even read it and throw it in the garbage. I mean, that's just what happens with a lot of people, but Jim has put in the newsletter that, uh, you know, that the uh, meetings are always broadcast. It's been in there. I looked at the last one you put it in there, that our meetings are broadcast on a government channel. So I don't know what, what we can say and, and, and keep people informed about it, and we're certainly not going to start sending newsletters out on a continuing basis over here because it's just too costly. You know, we don't have a town tax. We have, we, you know, we have to tighten our belt, too. We just can't be spending money you know, willy-nilly on this. We just put a new roof on, it's $48,000 over here. So we just can't, you know, we just can't keep doing these things. But uh, you had a question out before we wrap this up. Yeah, along here. I don't mean any disrespect, but the front page of our website has not changed in how many years? If you put something on the front page that gives them updated information about a variety of things, people will start looking at the website again. But when you go to the same page, it doesn't look like anything's changing. So why are they going to link in further to find out if the meetings have been updated? That's just my two cents. Because like you said, Shalmont's website, you've got something on the side that says, here's the recent news. Here's what's going on. 
we need to do something on our website to make that information more readily available. You know, bills are coming out, you know, look for the increase, you know, we've got the recycling day, things like that that could be put on as a recent information right on the home page. The comp plan's not there yet. No, it's not. Two years and it's still well, not on the website. Well, I sent Ronnie another That's message something. tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. Enough with the water. We're getting with it over here. Any other? Wes, you got anything else you'd like to add? No, I'm pretty well set. Okay, is there any other questions for Wes? No, I'll reiterate one more time. Anybody that wants to tour the system, I'm, I'm here, make an appointment. I mean, I'll show you exactly what's going on. I mean, the town board's been through it. Okay. Well, thank you, Wes. We appreciate everything you're doing. Okay, building inspector, code enforcement, June 8th and July 12th. Total permits three, permits issued three, permit inspection fees collected $288, building inspections 12, zoning review one. Uh, Final inspection zero, final building inspection zero, certificates of occupancy compliance zero, bank deposit report $288, check to supervisor $1,000, checkbook balance as of July 13, 2021, $138.14, activities in zoning one, working on planning zoning as needed, working on permit, final inspections as needed, reviewing <coughs> plans as needed, Thomas Marini, building inspector, any questions on this? If you do, I can give Tom. He's in the other room. Okay. You're up, Ben. Uh, it's uh, just one call about a dog that was taking a nap out in the road. <laughs> <laughs> Does that every now and then. Uh, he's an old husky. So I went to talk to the owner. They weren't home. But, um, other than that, I had the uh, Ag and Markets annual inspection, and I spoke with Elizabeth about the calls that we have done with Rotterdam, and she recommends that we don't do that because I'm supposed to be appointed by that town, and for us to do that, you know, this is three times now to do it, so they're going to probably continue to want to do it that way. So. She doesn't recommend that I uh, go to any more calls on their behalf. Well, we can't keep uh, can't keep doing that. Doing Rotter, you know, they, over here. We did get paid for that, didn't we? Yeah, they paid us. They compensated us for the time. The last one over here, but you know, the, right? You know, they're going to have to get their own uh, dog warden. Well, the main concern too is that it, you know, if I'm attacked by a dog. And there's some kind of a liability going on. That's what her main concern is. And I'm kind of in limbo there because I don't work for Rotterdam. I'm not appointed by them. And uh, it wouldn't fall on Princetown if something happened. So I'm sure Gerard would back me up on that, that it's <laughs> it's not a good place you know, to go. We helped them out. We know, did a like couple said, times. To, you know, be on their own right. that. You know, we can't yeah. keep uh, running over there to, to take care of them. And why they don't want to appoint somebody to do it or hire somebody is beyond me. Mm -hmm. But uh, any questions for Ben? I do have one question, and unrelated. Uh, we went to the Princeton Seniors today for their luncheon, and um, uh, they were asking me. They were, they were saying that the the uh, town meeting, town board meetings, uh, the current ones are still not up. On They're there. on there. They are. Okay, maybe she couldn't find them, but that's what she told me. I told her I'd pass it on. No, they're on there. They're on yeah, there. we don't bring them down anymore. They just upload them okay. from, so from our site. They're on there. Okay. They're okay. on there. It was on 1 o'clock in the morning. I turned the TV on over there. woke up and turned it on. And mm -hmm. There we were on there. It was the last meeting, so I don't know what they're talking about. It's uh, you know. <laughs> and it's on every Saturday, too. Yeah, okay. And periodically. Well, I'll tell her. I just said I would mention it tonight. So. Okay. No, it's on there. And by the way, the Princeton seniors are looking for more members from Princeton. So if anybody would like to join, uh, it's a nice organization. Ten bucks a year, I think. How much? Five bucks. Five bucks a year. Uh, nice organization. Why is it not published? 
<coughs> Anything else, Ben? No, that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Cork with the. Uh, where are we? Seek out a report here? Yeah, there's a report. Thank you. Uh, yes. Stay quiet. Yes. Here it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Controller's port for uh, June will be about $9,900, and we're steadily increasing our caseload. The operating protocols for the Fourth <coughs> Judicial District have been updated effective June 30th, 2021. I have a tax copy if anyone would like to read. All virtual arrangements have ended with the governor lifted the declaration of emergency. We are now conducting our own arrangements in order to get a centralized arraignment park approved in Schenectady County by OCA. It will be necessary to demonstrate the consent of all of the stakeholders in the county. Along those lines, Superintendent Walsh is working to obtain memorandums of understanding with each of the law enforcement agencies in the county, town, village, police departments. Chris Gardner is working to get it on the agenda for the upcoming con uh, county legislative meeting to get resolution and support to facilitate that. A sample of resolution that was passed by the Whitehall Town Board in Washington County a few years back is an example of what we may have tonight to consider, which we do. And Gerard, you look over and it's okay. I'm not going to read the, uh, this whole page over here. That was from uh, Michelle, and we do have a resolution on here to uh, to approve this. Uh, I don't know what number it is, but we'll get to it. Is there any questions on that report? Okay. We don't have a report from the assessor, but I know that he was doing upgrades on the, uh, uh, the state required, the county required, or the state required to, to look at uh, properties to see if the assessments were correct. He did that and the report was filed uh, to the state and I guess everything turned out right. I mean, from what I understand, the, uh, the assessed value that they go by was lower to, am I correct, Sandy? 30 was, I think Myler said it was down to 30 now. But uh, everything is fine, he said, and it was accepted. Buildings and grounds over here, the state police, well, the uh, roof was completed two weeks ago. Uh, I think they did a very good job so far, it seems so as they did. The valleys were put in as David, as we suggested, and uh, they are going to come back to replace the, uh, the uh, diverter on the side door over here because they took that off to replace the shingles, and they never replace it back up. I talked to him, he's going to come over. We had a problem with the state police building. The uh, septic system with all of the rain had to be pumped toilets were plugged, uh, they were all cleaned out, and one of their toilets was plugged. The, uh, I understand now that the, uh, the, the bathrooms in the ladies' room are starting to run slow. I think it's because of the, uh, all of the rain that we had in the... Uh, in the police in the, building, right here. Over here, that was over in the state police over here. Uh, I was talking with Nick today, and uh, we're going to get the, uh, someone in over here to uh, pump out the uh, septic tank system. Uh, pumping it doesn't alleviate the problem, but it will tell us that the uh, leach fields are working because we have a raised mound system, which is an evaporation system, and they'll be able to tell if the water is running back into the septic system. It so may, may start to evaporate maybe in August or September before we work on it. It pumps it. It pumps it up in there, you're right. And uh, apparently, Maybe the uh, with, with all of the run, with all of the water. Yeah. Check it out with some bad gold. Could be, thing. but we'll see when he pumps it out over there. What's going on with it? The water runs back to the check out. So he's going to do that tomorrow. Uh, other than that, any questions on the building, the grounds? Okay. Public hearings, we have none. Uh, PAC already been discussed, meeting minutes. The chair by resolve that the meeting, uh, meeting minutes of June 8, 2021 River Town Board meeting are approved or as amended. Uh, discussion? 
I make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy. Councilman Devereux. Yes. Councilman Jeff Russo. Yes. Councilman Devereux. Yes. Councilman Gray. Yes. Supervisor Escobedo. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> Fire Kill Fire District Public Hearing. Uh, I don't know if I would want to read that. Everybody's got a copy if they want to read it through. What it's all about is uh, they're they're a fire protection district and they want to become a commission district mainly because uh, they can't uh, the uh, taxes uh, that are going to support that district is not enough to uh, to keep it up to date so uh, they want to become a commission district we've discussed this we've got no problem with it they wanted uh, to do this so we have to have a public hearing on it with the town of Rotterdam because the town of Rotterdam is involved in it. They have a small portion of the uh, of their residents that are part of the Plotter Kill uh, Fire uh, District. So uh, we gave them a couple dates that we could be available. Uh, we could be available on any date. I mean, uh, Rotterdam is some reason over there. They can't seem to uh, come up with a, a date, but we did. So. Uh, this is notice of a joint public hearing concerning the establishment of a fire district in the town of Rotterdam and Princeton, New York. Please take notice that pursuant to town law, Article 11, the town boards of the town of Rotterdam and the town of Princeton shall conduct a joint public hearing on August 24, 2021 at 6 p.m. at the Potter, Plotter Kill Volunteer Fire Department Firehouse located on 3985 Putnam Road, Schenectady, New York, 12306. To hear all persons interested in a proposal to establish a fire district comprised of the properties within the existing Plotter Kill Fire Protection District in the town of Rotterdam and the Plotter Kill Fire Protection District in the town of Princeton. The boundary, boundaries of the opposed fire district shall be the same as the boundaries formed by the existing Plotter Kill Fire, fire Protection District and the Plotter Kill Fire Protection District. There shall be no boundary line along the continuous border between the towns as currently exist with the existing fire protection districts. All of the real property and only the real property currently within the Plotter Kill Fire Protection District in the town of Rotterdam and Plotter Kill Fire District in the town of Princeton intended to be included in the proposed fire district. The estimated tax rate per thousand of assessed valuation of the proposed district based on aggregate assessed valuation of taxable property within the proposed fire district utilizing the 2020 final assessment roll projected to be assessed, levied, and collected in a fire district first fiscal year of operation is unchanged from the current tax rate and amounts to a rate of $1.10 per thousand for properties in the town of Rotterdam and a rate of $3.49 per thousand for properties in the town of Princeton, the amount of total tax levy for the fire protection and emergency service in 2022 is expected to be approximately the same as the amount of the tax levy for 2021, the formula by which the amount of the future tax levies are calculated by the Board of the Fire Commissioners of the proposed fire district is expected to be consistent with the historical practices of the fire protection district. A detailed explanation of how the estimated rate of assessment was computed for properties in each town included within the proposed fire district is, is on file with the town clerks of each town. Uh, it's August 24th <coughs> that we're going to have to do it. If Rotterdam agrees to that date, if they don't agree to it, then uh, it's off for another month. We don't have special meetings over here to uh, to uh, pass resolutions. Uh, that was you need a motion for this, right? Pardon? You need a motion? We're going to need a motion. All right. So at the end, be it resolved that the town board authorizes the above notice and the joint public hearing to take place as set forth in the above. Yes. Uh, if Rotterdam doesn't agree to this, this date, then it's off for another year. I talked to their attorney, the Quiet Kills attorney that's, that's handling this. And, you know, he can't seem to get a date from Rotterdam, so. I'll make the motion. A second. Sandy? Councilman Pavoli? Yes. Councilman Jeff Russo? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Hopefully the attorney will, you know, put some pressure on Rotterdam to 
to make this date workable. The, the, the fire uh, district attorney. I know. I know. They, you know, because we don't want to go through this again. No, no, we don't. But we'll see. Their their meeting is tomorrow night, so we'll know after tomorrow night. They brought it up, Lou, at the last meeting. They did? Yeah, when I was taping it. They did bring it up, but they didn't make a decision yet, so maybe tomorrow night. Maybe tomorrow? Yeah, hopefully. Keep your fingers. Could you let us know? Yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Centralized Arrangements, Princetown Court. Whereas. Schenectady County is submitting a plan for council as an initial appearance coverage for arraignments in local courts, and whereas the plan provides for central arraignment, the court conducted twice a day at the Schenectady County Jail rather than at the town or village location of the arrest, and whereas the plan requires cooperation of the various local town and village justices, and whereas this plan should ensure consistency and representation as well as after our schedules, the various town and villages justices, and whereas state funding is available to provide for the expenses of the justices as they travel to Schenectady, and whereas the pro program will promote efficiencies among the town and villages justices as well as county operations, providing for mutual cooperation of the county municipalities, now therefore be it. Resolved that Town of Princeton hereby indicates its support for the county's plan for council at the initial appearance covers for arraignments and local courts. Discussion? Is there a motion? What's the impact on court here? Uh, I think this is just for like counties and stuff like that when they have special arrangements, Gerard? Yes, I don't know if the whole plan, I'm assuming they're going to do judges take turns at one location. I believe they take turns now, but at their own, they've been doing them through Zoom. Oh, really? So I think this is updating that they're not using Zoom. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Jenny. Councilman Foley? Yes. Councilman Jeff Rosen? Yes. Councilman Moore? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Resolution passed. PIAC Chair Appointment. Be resolved that Brewer Conroy is appointed at the PIAC Chair for return to expire 12 31 21. Discussion? Is there a motion? I'll make it. I'll second. Sandy? Councilman Foley? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilman Moore? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes, resolution passed. Hey, I... PIAC member appointment. Be it resolved that Dave Geisner is appointed as the PIAC member for return to expire 12 31 25. Discussion? Call me. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy? Councilman Pavoli? Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Did you want to say Object? something? I did. I did. I do. Uh, I submitted a resignation letter to the town board in early March, and I know I said in the resignation in the letter the res resignation that I would cease being chairman of the PAC by mid-year. This is where we are right now. And so, in regard to the prior uh, item you discussed about appointing Greer, I would propose that my termination be June 30th, and her she take over on July 1st this year. And regarding this this current thing about appointing me for to be a pay PAC member to the year 2025, I, I think my resi resignation letter mentioned that I was leaving PAC. I, I just got, I, I mentioned the expect that I, I'm into too much stuff, and I'm trying to cut back. So you want to be on a committee? No, I don't. Oh, well, you don't want to be on a committee? I, 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 I don't. I, I want to, I want to leave the committee effective this year. Uh, I have just too much stuff. There's too much stuff. Too much stuff on my plate. So we need to rescind this motion. Yeah. yeah. So we never passed it anyway. We just done made the 
motion, but that's where it stopped. Yeah. Yeah. We never oh, passed that. You're already out. And you're out. You didn't want it. So you can do it. That's easy. Thank, you for, thank you for your service thank that you, that you did we'll provide. We'll just put a big X across the page. There you go. So, so we do appreciate all the work you put into it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hate to see you leave. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. I'll be around for other things. <laughs> General funds claim is hereby resolved. The town board approves claim number one, one twenty-two, number one, number one forty-eight, amount of fifty-one thousand nine hundred seventy-seven dollars and two cents. Uh, discussion. Is there a motion? Okay. Is there a second. Sandy. Yes. 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 Water fence claims here by the South Town Board approves claims number 86 through number 102 in the amount of $6,319.96. Discussion? I'll make the board. Is there a second? I'll second. Sandy? Councilman Yes. Councilman Jack Russo? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Trust and agency can, uh, resolution passed. Trust and agency claims. Hereby resolve the town board approves claim number seven through nine in the amount of four thousand seventy-two dollars and fifty cents. Discussion. Is there a motion? Aye. I'll second it, Sandy. Councilman Foley? Yes. Councilman Jeff Russo? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Escobedo? Yes. <coughs> Council member comments, discussion. Doug? I have no. Ben? Can we start to get like a written, um, something written from the assessor? Because when we had hired him, you know, we wanted more transparency. Yes. I know you give us little yes. like, snippets, but, you know, something formal would be nice. He doesn't have to show up or anything, but. Yeah, so we're supposed to be, uh, what the, uh, what the, uh, assessments were that they, they reviewed with the state, and it's supposed to be on the website. I haven't checked it. He, as a matter of fact, he uh, asked that it be put on, and he uh, was emailed to, uh, to uh, Ronnie, so I think it's up. I'm not sure. Well, even beyond that. You know, I know, just no, I know. That are no, going no, he's got to start doing this stuff. It's a <coughs> I will definitely speak with him about that. Okay, that's it. Anything else? No. Jim? Uh, only uh, that, uh, you know, again with the water, uh, we are getting a little bit of, a little bit of money from the COVID relief uh, package. It's not a lot. Uh, on small towns like the town of Princeton, uh, we don't get it directly from the federal government. I, I learned that the hard way. I spent three hours applying and they said, finally said, the money goes to the state, then the state, when they get around to it will we'll give us our little share so hopefully at some point um before the summer is ended we're supposed to get is that what they told you we're supposed to get yes uh, i got uh, emails and i got letters from them yep. and here's the thing with it we were supposed to get two hundred and thirty thousand dollars for some reason it's lower to two two uh to two hundred and fourteen thousand dollars I don't know if that had anything to do with the state taking their share or something of it. And we're only going to get half of it this year. And we may not get it until the end of the summer, apparently. That's when it's going to happen. We don't know for sure. And then we're not going to get the other half until next year. And Even though all the money is given to the state The state already, already has the money. It. The towns that were over 50,000 in population got their money directly from the federal government. Unfortunately, all of the towns in the uh, around here, and most of the towns do not have a population over 50,000 people. So uh, the money was given to the state. We already put in our application. I already received the correspondence back via email and letter that they received it, and we will be receiving the funds sometime, according to them, by the end of summer, whatever that means. But uh, and it's only going to be 104,000, 107,000, excuse me, and we're supposed to get the other 107,000 next year. 
I'm going to call our congressman and ask why it was lowered from 230 to 214. When we have all the correspondence here that what every town was supposed to get, and if you look at it, it says it was supposed to get $230,000. But uh, they lowered it to 214. I don't know if the state has taken a cut on every one of the towns that they're distributing. And while you're, while you're inquiring, I'd like to know why we can't get all of it this year. We should be getting it all at once, not help. The, the, the towns that are over 50000 got there directly from the federal government. And I'm sure they're not split up half a year. And normally, I wouldn't care, honestly, except the fact that we're in such desperate condition with the water system. We're in arrears. We, we owe money that we can't pay. Uh, not a good situation to be in. So we're depending on this money, the little bit that we're going to get. Uh, it can only be used for infrastructure, water or sewer. You know, we're really depending on it. We're counting on it. It's not a lot, but it's going to help us. So I would like to know why we can't get it this year. So when you inquire, I am going to. Uh, I just received that letter and the email this past week. Why? Uh, what they're going? How they're going to distribute it? So it's not the state's money. It's the feds. The fed gave it to the state. The state's holding it, and they give it to us. I guess when they feel like it. They're drawing interest on it. <laughs> Here we are right here, 230000 Anybody who wants to have a copy of this, you can have it, every, whatever town is going to get it in the state. We're it doesn't sound it. like a lot of money, but, you know, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, mean, we're, we're, cutting, we're cutting pencils and paper here to save money for the town. And that, that money was necessary for the water district. And these are the towns <laughs> that are the state of the city. Like I said, the cities and the towns that are over 50000 they already got their money. I, I don't understand it. But, uh, that's what uh, that's what the state is doing. So, that's all I have. Uh, I don't have anything. Yeah, there was a question about some people uh, wanting to know how they could get 10% off of their bill. So all they have to do is call is, is call the. Uh, one of the solar companies over here that are providing uh, solar array systems for uh, that's going into the national grid. We've got nothing to do about it, but uh, I've been getting news in the mail. Anybody wants a copy, that's all I have to do is put this false number over here. And this is next camp or something. Is that right? Next camp. Next camp. And, uh, and you can get 10% off. You just got to buy your. Uh, uh, electricity from the solar company and I'll give you a 10% discount. It's got nothing to do with the town, but uh, that's what that's what uh, they're, they'll do that and they'll take care of everything. Myself, I would not get involved in it. I, I would just assume pay national grid and pay the extra 10%, but that's me. So, I don't think I have anything else other than uh, nothing. We, we're all set then. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And I vote on me. Go ahead. I'll second it. Sandy. Councilman Pavoli? Yes. Councilman Jeff Russo? Yes. Councilman Mora? Yes. Councilman Gray? Yes. Supervisor Esposito? Yes. Thank you all for coming.